Following damage to peripheral nerves, certain people develop a sensitivity to light touch called tactile allodynia. Normally innocuous stimulation produces pain that persists even after recovery from injury. Under normal physiologic conditions, light touch is transmitted from low threshold receptors in the skin through large A beta fibers to a network of neurons in the spinal cord. The signals are transmitted along this low threshold pathway to sensory centers in the brain. Nociceptive pathways conveying signals from high threshold mechanoreceptors in the skin include a distinct pathway that passes through neurons in lamina 1 of the spinal cord. However, nociceptive and light touch pathways are interconnected. They communicate through a complex network of synaptic connections that include inhibitory interneurons in the dorsal horn. These inhibitory interneurons normally act to repress the flow of nociceptive related information. And in addition, mask the interconnected nature of low threshold and nociceptive pathways. Thus, light touch produces no excitation of nociceptive pathways and in fact can even serve to repress them. However, when the control signal from these inhibitory interneurons becomes less efficient or is inverted, the excitatory transmission between low threshold and nociceptive pathways becomes possible. And this crosstalk presents clinically as tactile allodynia. How does peripheral nerve damage make inhibitory pathways excitatory? Following peripheral nerve injury, signals emanate from damaged peripheral nerve endings. The signals activate non-neuronal cells in the spinal cord, called microglia. Activated microglia proliferate around the endings of the damaged nerve, near lamina 1 of the dorsal horn. Meanwhile, lamina 1 neurons of the nociceptive relay pathway continue to receive input from peripheral C sensory fibers, as well as local interneurons. GABA releasing inhibitory interneurons reduce the excitability of lamina 1 neurons by inducing a hyperpolarizing influx of chloride. Between GABA release events, pumping activity of the chloride-potassium co-transporter, KCC2, plays a major role in re-establishing the chloride concentration gradient. Activated microglia secrete brain-derived neurotrophic factor 1 that binds to track B receptors on the surface of the lamina 1 neurons. This triggers an intercellular cascade that results in downregulation of KCC2. Without KCC2, chloride accumulates intracellularly. And when GABA ionophores activate, the resulting efflux of chloride is depolarizing. Some of the inhibitory interneuron-mediated depolarizations are of a large enough magnitude to induce an action potential. Thus, following peripheral nerve injury, inhibitory interneurons in the superficial dorsal horn lose their inhibitory power and in the extreme case can even become excitatory. Ultimately, this functional shift completes the excitatory circuit between low threshold and nociceptive pathways, setting the stage for tactile allodynia.